Hello Grade 7s. In today's lesson, we are going to begin a new unit of study in math called Working with Data. And for today's lesson specifically, we are going to demonstrate an understanding of central tendency by determining two things from a set of data called the median and the mode. The median of a data set is the number that you find in the middle of the data set. For example, let's say we have a data set. I haven't given any physical meaning to this data set where we have 2, 2, 4, 6, 6, 8, 10, 10, 10. These could, for example, be the number of goals scored by a hockey team over nine games. The median would be of these numbers in the data set, it's which number you would find in the middle. To find the number in the middle, I mean, you can just look at it and observe it, but sometimes I find it a little bit difficult to keep track of what's going on. So what I would do is I'd start from the outside of the data set and work in. So let's go in by one, cross off the two and the 10. We'll go in by two, cross off the two and the 10. Go in by three, cross off the four and the 10. Go in by four numbers, cross off the six and the eight. And you can see right here, your middle number is then six. And your middle number is what we call the median. I think as a, an analogy, I, I believe when you're driving on the road, if you have like, let's say there's like a traffic going one way, and then you have a, another road going in the opposite direction, so for example, this would be traffic going upwards, traffic going downward. Sometimes you have like a cement block between these. And I believe the cement block between them is called a median. Where is the cement block located? Well, in the middle of the two to the two roads. So middle of the two roads, middle of the data set. If you like that as a way to memorize what the median is, then go ahead and use it. Otherwise, it is just the middle number. The mode is the most frequently occurring number in a data set. So going back to the example where I said this could be like the number of goals scored by a sports team, a hockey team, the mode would be the most frequently occurring number of goals that have been scored in a game. And if you look at the data set here, I can see the number 10 occurs three times. That occurs more than any of the other numbers. Two occurs twice, four occurs once, six occurs twice, eight occurs once, 10 occurs three times. Therefore, the mode of the data set is 10. In the example I provided, the data has already been nicely organized, starting from the smallest number to the largest number. However, oftentimes we're going to get a set of data that is not organized for you. And what you want to do to correctly identify the median specifically and to most easily see the mode is you want to take all your data and write it in ascending order. Ascending order means the numbers are getting bigger. I mean, if you think of uh, the word ascending, you can think of like making an ascent. An ascent would be like your climbing a hill, you're getting to a higher elevation. So ascending order would just be you're, you're starting from lower numbers and you're going to higher numbers. Okay, so a couple of examples for this. I want to determine the median and the mode for the following sets of data. Now, these sets of data are not organized. What I want to do is first of all, before I do anything, I want to turn them into ascending order. So we'll start off by doing this. So for part A, the lowest number of this data set is five. So I'll just cross it off. And then we have eight that occurs one, two, three times. So you have eight, eight, eight. Then we have a single nine. Then we have a 10. Then we have 12 that occurs one, two times. So you have 12, 12, 
And then my final number is the 13. Okay, immediately when you look at this, you should be able to identify the modes. The mode is the number that I see occur the most, and that is eight. Eight occurs three times, so I'll immediately identify the mode is equal to eight. The median, well, you might be able to identify it if you look at the set, but if not, again, I, I find it easier to keep track of or determine the median by uh, starting on the outside of the data set and working in. So if we go in by one, go in by two, go in by three numbers, go in by four numbers, I can see the middle of the data set is nine, therefore my median would be equal to nine. Next one, we've got a few more numbers in this data set. Okay, so first things first, if the list is disorganized, you wanna put it in ascending order. So when I look at this data set, I believe the smallest number is 35, which occurs one, two times. So I have 35. 35. The next smallest number is 37, which also occurs twice. So you have 37, 37. Next smallest number, I believe, is 40. Cross that off to keep track of it. Then 41. Then 42. Then 44. And then, oops, not 44, uh, 43 came before that, so let's erase it. Okay, 43, then 44, and then 47. So we have 35, 35, 37, 37, 40, 41, 42, 43, missing that 44. Okay, let's fix that. 44, and then 47. Okay, I believe that is correct now. 41, 42, 43, 44, 47. If you look at the data set, let's identify the mode first. The mode is the most frequently occurring number. In this case, there's a tie. 35 occurs twice and 37 also occurs twice. Every other number just occurs one time. It is possible for you to have two modes or three modes if you have like a tie between tie of the most frequently occurring numbers. In this case, you'd actually have two. You'd have 35 and you would have 37. Okay, median's a little bit trickier. So again, we'll just start from the outside of the data set and work in. So I'll go in by one number, go in by two, go in by three, go in by four, and now you have a bit of a problem. In the first example, I had an odd number of data in the set. If you have an odd number of data in the set, you will have an exact center. This second example I actually have an even number of data in the sets. So you actually have two middle numbers. You have 40 and you have 41. There still is a median. The median would just be what is the halfway or the midpoint between 40 and 41. Now that's pretty obvious. Like what's halfway between 40 and 41? Well, it'd be 40.5. If it was a bit more difficult to see what the median is, what you can do is you can calculate it by taking the two middle numbers, which would be 40 plus 41, and then just find the average of those two numbers. We'll talk more about calculating an average and a mean in the next lesson. So you'd have 40 plus 41. The fraction sign just means divided by two. So 40 plus 41 would be 81 divided by two. And then when you cut 81 in half, you do get 40 point 
five. C. Thankfully, this one has less numbers in the data set, so it should be easier to keep track of. Okay, so the smallest number is a five. Then we have a six. Then we have an eight. Then we have a 10. Again, always just rewrite it in ascending order first. Then we have an 11. And then we have a 14. Now, in this case, each number occurs just once. If each number occurs just once, there is no mode because th there is nothing that sets the other numbers, uh, uh, one number apart from the other. So we just say the mode is none. In terms of the median, well, let's work inwards. Much easier to do here. Go in by one, go in by two, and you have two middle numbers because this is an even number of data in the set. So the median would be the midpoint of eight and 10, which is nine. If I wasn't totally sure about that, you could calculate it though. Your median would be equal to take eight, add 10. You're finding the average of them. So you're just dividing by two. Again, fraction means division. And you have 18 divided by two. And then I get my median is equal to nine. One more example. So what you're provided with in this example is a frequency table. And what this frequency table shows is the number of times students in a particular class got a score of a one, two, three, or a four on a math exam. So we have our four point grading scale. You can get a one, a two, a three, or a four. What the frequency part of the table is telling you is it's telling you how many students got that number. Sometimes you'll see this represented as a tally chart. So if I represented three as a tally, it'd be like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Five, you'd go one, two, three, four. And then the fifth number, you draw a horizontal line across. So that's all it's doing is it's telling me what the, uh, how many times the students got that particular score. Now, the good thing about a frequency table is immediately a frequency table tells you the mode because the mode is the most frequently occurring number. So what's the mode score here? Well, it's a four because it occurred five times. So the mode is four. Now the median is a bit trickier because you need to actually account for how many times you got these scores. So someone might look at just the score and be like, okay, you have a score of a one, two, a three, or four. Those are my only four numbers. Therefore the median would be between two and three, it's 2.5. Well, that's incorrect because that would only assume that you would have each of those scores occurring one time but I have these scores occurring a bunch of times. So what I wanna do is I wanna write down the full list. Okay, so how many times did we get a one? We got it one, two, three times. How many times did in the class was there a, a two? Well, we had a two occur three times. So one, two, three. How many times was a score of three obtained? Also three times, we write down one, two, three. And how many times was a four obtained? Five times. So we had a four occur one, two, three, four, five. So if you're given a frequency table, you're gonna have a little bit more work to do because you need to take the frequency table and expand it to properly identify the median. Very difficult to just look at a frequency table and be able to identify what exactly the median is without expanding this. Okay, so let's try to figure out the median by working inward. So I'll change the ink color. Okay, so let's go in by one. Go in by two. Go in by three. Go in by four. Go in by five. Go in by six. My two middle numbers are a three. I'm not even gonna show the calculation because what's the midpoint of three and three? Well, it's just three. So your median here would be three. 
So it is not 2.5. Expand the list to figure out what the median is. All right, in your MathLink 7 textbook, there's a few questions to practice on page 426, numbers 4 through 9. And then next time we'll talk about how to calculate the mean or the average of a data set. Talk to you then.